Hey everybody, Shark Scrapper. Well, my latest pickup of computers had some interesting stuff like this thing here that I think is a CD drive box kind of thing. It's got a bunch of CD drives in it. So we're going to dive into that first and see what that yields. Come on, let's dive in. All right, now, according to these tags, it says this is great for music mixing. CD SCSI Tower, six CD-ROM drives, 80 bucks. SCSI. SCSI Wuzzy was a bear. SCSI Wuzzy had no hair. SCSI Wuzzy was a CD-ROM player. Oh, boy. One and a half. Ah, interesting, interesting, interesting. So, we got these nice big connectors, and then these are joined in some fashion. Uh, there's little screws in there, pull those together. And, let's see, we've got some nylon, nylon screws here. All right, so we got these nylon screws out of the way. And that lets me uh, get to some sort of back plane with more screws. I'll show you in a minute. Not a back plane board, but a, a, uh, the back of the device. And I think we're going to have to get these connectors off here. Let's see. Hmm, hard to get the drive in there. Let's see if I have to use the screwdriver, maybe. <clears throat> Man, that was a pain in the patootis, but some nice gold connectors in there. All right, now that lets me get off of that. And you can see there's screws on these plates. So let me get the rest of these off and we'll be, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now we can get at the back of this bad boy or bad girl, bad girl. Get the screws out of here. And that lets us get that tray out. Okay. So we end up with two CDs on a caddy. We had a little power board in here. A little power board in there. And then the, the boards for the CD connectors. So we're gonna take one of these apart and take a look at it here in a minute. <clears throat> and then each, each of these is its own uh, aluminum. Um, I don't know, I would say this was extruded. I don't know how the yard will take it, but clearly this came out of an extru extrusion, right? This wasn't uh, cast or a sheet that was put together. Anyway, um, nice chunk of aluminum there. We'll get the plastic off of the front. There's a little bit of wire in here. We'll get that out of here. So we got some nice aluminum out of it. And it looks like the way this was designed, you could stack up as many of these modules as you wanted to. <clears throat> now, let's put you over there for a minute and let's see what we've got here. So, get some wires disconnected. And I'm just going to cut that with my snips. These are really handy for 
cutting ribbon wire, flat wire, depending upon what you like to call it. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. There. Now, if you are so inclined, you can uh, cut the backs off of these. Let me show you. Let's see if we can do this real quick. I used to do this all the time. You cut that off. Then you can pull out this connector and you see all these little points that are sticking up. Well, if you carefully pull those out, I don't know if I can do it with these big old schnips, but yeah, so if you carefully pull those out, you got tiny little pins with gold plating on there. So you can sit around and when you're on live streams, pull these out if you want, or you can throw these in with gold connector ends with board sort or whatever buyer you have. Now with my yard, I don't have to pull off the ends of my, <clears throat> my wire. They will take uh, this ribbon wire as number two insulated and they do not require that I cut off the ends. But if I wanted to, you know, I could sit here and cut this end off, put that in with gold connector ends, cut this one off, put that in with gold connector ends, and then this could all go in with, for me, for my yard, number two insulated. Most yards are different. Most yards have a different category for that flat wire, ribbon wire, uh, low grade wire, something like that. So you need to know what your yard grades it as. Get some stuff unplugged. get that fan off of there here's a little we don't even have to mess with taking the fan off right we cut the braces the brackets and voila we break off the fins and we've got a small electric motor viola voila <laughs> all right now get you off of there you off of there these are just power cords. These ends are not going to be gold connector ends. These are just power cords here. <clears throat> One wire. Now the problem I'm going to have is right here. I've got to get this off. We'll see if those screws want to come off. I'm just going to go right with hand on that because the other ones were giving me such a fit. Okay, now, got these aluminum posts. That's how we deal with that one. Now, <clears throat> nice power board, nice example of a of this power board. That coil can come off for the copper, this can come off, this can come off for the copper, and they usually come off pretty easily. There we go. Now you've got access to the copper wire on there and just get the, the running end loose. Come on, there you go. And once you have that part loose, uh, you can take uh, like hold of it like that so that you've got a little bit of space and then just start pulling on it and it comes right out. Now you got a little piece of wire, copper wire. And then that, that piece that it was wrapped around, that's a ferrite core, so um, when I find that on the deck there, I will go ahead and put that in with my little metal bits, my little ferrous bits. Of course, you can always just unwind this, right? Like that if you want. Whatever floats your boat. If I can get enough grip on it. Yeah, we got it. And we broke up the ferrite core already, so that's cool. Had to do that anyway. Now what's nice about these is, once you get the ferrite core broken out and you got that hole in the middle, stick a screwdriver up in there and grab hold of it and just start pulling the wire off. There you go. Now 
and that part is just trash. All right, uh, now this can come off as a motor if you want. Uh, that'll just be coil copper wire, uh, so that could come out as a small motor or low grade board. All right, now we have, looks like some brass risers here. Drives off of here now. Oh man. So, whenever you have ferrous screws going into aluminum and uh, especially if it's old stuff, you have this tendency for the screws for the ferrous screw to get to bite into the aluminum and it makes it a little difficult to get it out. The drivers don't work as well because uh, sometimes you have to give it a tighten turn and then you'll hear it click and then you can untighten it or unscrew it and then unfortunately if you use the driver right away you tend to round out the screw like I just did there but I just take these vice grips, grab hold of it. The teeth will bite into the screw a little bit. Give it a turn, and then you can get it out of there. So it's uh, cumbersome. It takes a bit more time. But such is life. This. I'm pretty sure that's aluminum. Yeah. So here we have sheet aluminum. I've got some options here. I can finish cleaning up this and put this in with the sheet aluminum. I can cut it right here and put this in with breakage. That's probably what I'm going to do. And to do that, I'm going to get this last bit of metal off of here. All right. Now, let's see what we got going here. We've got CD, these are CD-ROMs. So, let's see how big the boards are. These are some older CD-ROMs, so I'm kind of hoping they're gonna have some good sized boards on them. Dog. All right, now, that's what I call Lulu. So you dog. All right, so yeah, that's a nice big board. Let's see, I'm thinking 10, 10. And this board has some screws on it. We'll go again, get this one out here too, just so we can Take a look at what's under it, for curiosity's sake, more than anything else. All right, now. So, nice CD-ROM board. And uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and bust that off of there because I'm gonna sell this to Chris as a CD-ROM board. This part here is just brittle board, nasty, low-grade stuff. That would not be fair to Chris to include that in with the CD-ROM board. And there we have a nice CD-ROM board to sell the board sort. Now this particular CD-ROM is, is old enough that it's got a nice aluminum case here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the time right now with you all and uh, finish breaking this down. See how much aluminum there really is to this case because I got to decide if I want to do this for all of them now pro quest pro quest resource one full text all right interesting I don't know what that was um, case caddy so, oh, you know what? I know what was going on here. 
So this would have been in like that, and you would have had you would have put your your disc right in this caddy, and then you would shove that in rather than the tray always coming out. Interesting. Interesting. All right, so this means that's going to be probably aluminum. Yep, a little sheet aluminum, and then a bunch of plastic. Okay, now. We got quite a bit of metal in here, a couple little motors. Um, I don't think I'm going to mess with this much more. Uh, it's definitely, you know, this is cast aluminum, but I'm going to throw this in with breakage. Now, if you're so inclined, you can get that motor out. There's another motor here that you can get out. Um, there's a motor there that you can get at. Uh, but I'm just going to throw this in with breakage. All right. You know what? That was that, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to take me a while to get through the rest of this. I don't think that you all want to sit around and watch me break down the same stuff all over again, right? Because it's just going to be a repeat of what we just did. So you all have a wonderful day.